use and zoning. To the north is agricultural, IT. To the south, the same. To the east, the same. And to the west, the same. Under site history, on July 29, 2008, the Mayor and City Council approved the annexation, classification or reclassification, annexation agreement, and concept plan for the approximate 3,300 acre development, which includes approximately 14 to 18 million square feet of distribution center space and railroad terminal. On Dece December 2, 2008, the Mayor and City Council approved the preliminary, final, and recording plat of Center Point Intermodal Center at Joliet Phase 1, which included uh, 1,253 acres. Phase 2, which included all of Center Point Holdings at the time, was approved in March 2010. Subsequent phases have been recorded from March 2011 through May 2019. No site history exists for the subject site to be annexed, an individual annexation agreement or amendment to the original document is not required due to language provided in the original annexation agreement for the acquisition of additional parcels. Under special information, as part of the original approval, CenterPoint was directed to continue negotiations with adjacent property owners that might be affected by the existing and future industrial development. The parcel in question has been acquired by CenterPoint and will be compiled with their existing holdings for their industrial park expansion. The approved IT district includes four subcategories. In accordance with the approved concept plan, the subject site will fall within the category C, industrial park portion. A two-story frame residence and garage currently <coughs> exist on the property. A renter is planning on staying in the house until December 2019. At that time, a demolition permit will be submitted for the house by center point. A 12-inch water main and an 8-inch sanitary sewer main are located on the east side of Vetter Road right-of-way. Connection will be required at the time of a future development, and that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Okay, can we have the petitioner? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. Mike Hanson, uh, Joliet attorney representing Center Point. The, uh, this is just a simple um, annexation of a one acre piece of property which we just recently purchased to conform to the existing annexation. Very simple uh, process. Very good. Okay. Are there any comments or questions from the board members? Are there any, any questions, uh, comments from the citizens in reference to this? Okay. No. Um, is there a motion on the floor for this? Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Crompton? Aye. Ms. Fighting? Aye. Mr. Kella? Aye. Mr. Mystic? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mr. Rusinellis? Aye. Mr. Caparelli? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Mr. Dillon? Aye. Thank you very much. The uh, next and final item to be moved up uh, is P519, preliminary plan of Center Point Intermodal Center at Juliet Subdivision Phase 22, and FP2-19, and that's the final plan of Center Point Intermodal Center at Juliet Subdivision Phase 22. Applicants and owners, uh, Center Point Juliet Terminal Railroad, LLC, uh, they are seeking approval of a preliminary and final plat of subdivision to create two industrial lots for future development. Existing zoning is ITB, and that is the Joliet Intermodal Terminal Transportation Equipment Zoning District. Uh, location is north of Knoll Road, west of Patterson Road, 24.3 acres in size, currently undeveloped. To the north is industrial IT, City of Joliet, to the south is industrial, village of Elwood. To the east is undeveloped, village of Elwood. To the west is industrial IT zoning in the city of Joliet. <clears throat> Under site history, Center Point Joliet Terminal Railroad, LLC, has petitioned for multiple requests heard and approved by the Plan Commission and the City Council for their Center Point Intermodal Center at Joliet Development. The majority of the property was annexed, zoned IT, and approved with an annexation agreement as part of phase one in December 2008. 
Phase two, which included all of Centerpoint Holdings at the time, was approved in March 2010. Subsequent phases have been recorded from March 2011 through May 2019. Under special information, the petitioner is requesting approval of the phase 22 preliminary and final plats in order to allow the two lot subdivision and continued industrial development of the Centerpoint Intermodal Center Lot 30, which contains 9.7 acres, is intended to serve as the stormwater management facility for the development. Lot 31, which is 14.6 acres in size, is to include a truck parking, uh, I'm sorry, truck trailer parking lot for 455 spaces. The truck trailer parking lot is a permitted use as per the ITB zoning district. It is to be part of a larger facility that is proposed in the village of Aylwood. The future user and an overall site plan of the entire development has been requested, but not received as, the, as of the writing of this staff report. Access to the subject site will be from Patterson Road and navigating, uh, and navigating through the village of Aylwood's portion of the trucking facility. There have been discussions with the developer about exchanging this subject site on the east side of the Union Pacific Railroad line that is currently in the city of Joliet with some land that is currently in the village of Elwood that is on the west side of the railroad, railroad line. These discussions can be ongoing and will need to, to include the village of Elwood. The approval of the su subdivision should not affect the final decision on this. The proposed development plans will comply with the existing ITZ zoning code and the landscape ordinance. All public improvements will be required as per the subdivision regulations and the requirements of the public works and utilities departments. Sewer and water connections, sewer surcharge fees, and development impact fees will be required as per the previously approved annexation agreement. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Okay, from the petitioner. Once again, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Michael Hansen, attorney. <coughs> this uh, property is the far southern boundary of the city of Joliet, adjoining Elwood. We have a particular user for this property, so we're in compliance with the city codes and ordinances. We're working with the staff to uh, develop the plats on this uh, particular subdivision and coming to your, you for a recommendation of the council for approval. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the citizens on this? Uh, from the Board of Commissioners, any questions or comments <coughs> on this? I have a motion for P-5-19 and FP-2-19. Move to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Ms. Fighting. Aye. Mr. Kella. Aye. Mr. Mystic. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Rusinellis. Aye. Mr. Caporelli. Aye. Mr. Cox. Aye. Mr. Crompton. Aye. Mr. Dillon. Aye. Thank you very much. Moving back to the uh, top of the agenda under old business public hearing, we have Z-2-19, and that's the reclassification of 3.85 acres at 3401 West Jefferson Street from R1 single family residential to B3 general business zoning, and reclassification of 0 0.75 acres at 35 3405 West Jefferson Street from R4 multifamily to R1 single family residential zoning. V 4 19, which is the vacation of an existing 10 foot wide utility easement and 10 foot wide ComEd easement at 3401 and 3405 West Jefferson Street. And finally, we have P 4 19, and that is the preliminary plat of Speedway Joliet 2 re-subdivision. Applicant in this matter is Christian um, Kalashevsky, who is the agent for Speedway LLC. Status of the applicant is contract purchaser and developer. Um, the owners, uh, a split ownership here, parcel one would be Universalist Unitarian Church of Joliet. Parcel two is Robert Stephen uh, Trust. Requested action is approval of a zoning reclassification, utility easement vacation, and a preliminary plat of subdivision. The purpose is to allow for future Speedway Fueling Center. Existing zoning is B3 general business, R4 multifamily residential, and R1 single family residential. 
location is 3401 and 3405 West Jefferson Street. Uh, that is the northwest corner of Jefferson Street and Hobolt Road. Parcel 1 is 3.85 acres. Parcel 2 is 2.6 acres. Existing land use on Parcel 1 is a vacant church. On Parcel 2, it is undeveloped. Surrounding land use and zoning. To the north is single family residential, and that's R1 zoning. To the south is Joliet Park District um, Airport, B3, and that's general business zoning. To the east is commercial, B3 zoning. To the west is undeveloped with a mix of R4, multifamily, and B3 zoning. Under site history, parcel one, which includes the church building and parking lot, is approximately 3.85 acres and was annexed and zoned R1 single family residential in 2002. The adjacent 2.6 acres within parcel two uh, is undeveloped and was annexed and zoned B3 general business and R4 multifamily in 1981. A variation on landscaping and signage was heard by the Zoning Board of Appeals earlier this afternoon. Under special information, approval of the proposed zoning reclassifications, easement vacation and preliminary plat of a two lot subdivision will allow for the future development of lot one with a new speedway fueling center. Lot one includes 3.85 acres and is proposed to be reclassified from R1 single family to B3 general business. Lot two includes 2.5 acres that is proposed to be reclassified from R4 multifamily to R1 single family and earmarked for a future conservation easement. The Illinois courts have established a set of factors known as the LaSalle factors to, to be considered when reaching zoning decisions. I think those are attached to your packet. Um, vacations of the 10 foot wide utility easements are being requested due to their imminent encroachment with the future building location. Replacement easements will be created and established as part of the subdivision recordation process. Public works and utilities are not opposed to the vacation request. The Speedway Fueling Center proposal includes a one-story, 4,600-square-foot building that will also include a convenience store. The material of the future building will be brick, which com complies with the city's non-residential design standards. An automobile fueling canopy is proposed in the front, and a truck fueling ca canopy is proposed in the back. Both canopy pylons will be wrapped with brick material to match the building, Truck parking is not being proposed as part of this development. The site will be fully landscaped as per the city's landscape ordinance. A preliminary landscape plan has been submitted that includes extensive berming to provide additional buffering to adjust adjacent properties. The, the developer desires to preserve the trees and vegetation which is currently growing along the rear of the property. The natural vegetative buffer in the rear of the property which is between 122 and 300 and 10 feet deep will be protected by future conservation easement being proposed by the developer. A six foot high decorative fence and a stormwater wetland, bo wetland bottom pond are being proposed in the rear for further buffering. A lighting plan has been provided that illustrates that the proposed site lighting will not spill onto adjacent properties. The facility's main points of access will be off Jefferson Street, where a right-in only curb cut is being proposed for automobile only traffic, and a full in and right out only is being proposed that would be utilized by automobiles and trucks. These would need to be approved by the Illinois Department of Transportation. Two additional full access curb cuts are being proposed onto Hobolt Road. Signage will be installed that directs trucks to enter the facility from Jefferson Street and exit the site onto Hobolt Road. An access easement will be reserved for the property to the west for future commercial cross access if it ever develops. A traffic impact study has been completed by the petitioner and is available on the city's website. The traffic impact study has been reviewed and accepted by the city's public works department in order to provide uh, the best traffic circulation patterns for the proposal. It should be noted that the petitioner sought approval from the Federal Aviation Administration at the direction of the Joliet Park District and has received a determination of no hazard to air navigation letter for their proposal. Although the petitioner has received this letter from the 
FAA, the Joliet Park District, is still in opposition to the proposed fueling station due to proximity of their grass landing strip. All public improvements will be required as per the subdivision regulations and Public Works and Utilities Department. City water and sewer is available and is adjacent to the property within the Jefferson Street and Hobolt Road right of way. The new development will be required to pay sewer and water connection fees and the developer impact fee. It should be noted that the developer conducted a neighborhood meeting to discuss their project on July 11th. I believe there were several um, residents and a few businesses present at that particular meeting and uh, voice their concerns. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Okay, do we have the petitioner on hand? Good afternoon, my name is Chris Kalashevsky. I'm from WT Group. Uh, with us here from Speedway is also Robert Schroeder from real estate division as well as Peter Perchlick from the construction division. We also have with us our traffic engineer uh, Luay Abuna and our civil engineer Todd Abrams and then also um, Frank Petrich is here from WT Group. Uh, so we're here to answer questions but we'd like to present our um, presentation <coughs> and So with this, the first part of our presentation is we'd like to show that Speedway is a, a very reputable company, also a very solid company, that uh, this is not a proposal that will diminish quickly. This is a proposal that will last for decades and decades and a commitment to the community uh, that we're going into. Uh, basically, why Joliet? We feel that there is over 200, from our market study, 205 million gallons, annual gallons, within a five mile radius area. And that is one of our key points that we look at and where to put a station. Also, not on this list, but the existing traffic is 25,000 cars on Jefferson, 15.8 thousand cars on Hobart. So the existing traffic is there that generates those uh, volumes. Also within five miles is the 161,000 residents, as well as 70,000 employees. Okay. Also a key number for deciding where to put a station. The economic benefit to Joliet would not only include the initial 7.5 million investment, but also would generate 15 to 20 permanent jobs, and then also create on an annual basis $190,000 to Joliet. That is, uh, then over and above that is our taxes to the state and, and all that. So that would be 190,000 annually to the, the city of Joliet. And why Speedway? Um, Speedway is backed, their parent company, which is Marathon Petroleum, is a Fortune 50 company, not a Fortune 500 company, a Fortune 50 company, which shows its stability and also its longevity. We also uh, provide a very strong base for uh, future employment. The next slide here shows that we have many uh, customers throughout the day, but also many customers are part of the rewards program. And we have all, just under 4,000 stores in operation throughout the country. So Speedway now is a coast-to-coast -coast company and a very strong player in the petroleum market. This is a 45-year-old company, it's 40,000 employees, and it is, uh, if it was just considered by itself, it would be a, the 41st company in the Fortune 500. So that talks about the economic stability of the company itself, the commitment to the communities that it goes into. 
Also, it's very philanthropic in terms of Speedway itself has raised over 9.8 million for the Children's Miracle Network in the last year of 2018. And then this slide shows specifically for the Lori Hospital in Chicago that over 1.3 million was raised. And so they take this very serious and um, also, they have recognized Speedway as a major contributor, named the kitchen area after them, and are very appreciative of the Speedway efforts and, and what the Speedway customers do in terms of giving to this uh, very worthy cause. The next thing is uh, what we're showing is that our site, which is basically right in the center of the screen here. If you go 46 miles to the east, you go 49 miles to the west along the major route of I-80, you have what we consider is 20 true truck stops. And we just are proposing that our facility is really not a truck stop. We don't have the size of the building for showers or a sit-down restaurant. We do not have semi-truck parking. We don't have a proliferation of semi-truck uh, fueling lanes. And this next slide, so that's the, the general, so there's 20 what we feel are truck stops. The next slide is a little summary. And you'll see of the 20 that we consider truck stops, the first column there in terms of acreage, you're basically about 10.17 acres. The, the portion of site that we're going to use for commercial purposes is only going to be 3.86 acres. The, the average size of a truck stop building is 10,800 square feet. Our building is only 4,600 square feet. Uh, the number of CFL lanes at a truck stop, average of those 20 is 8.79. We only have two. The number of parking spaces, which is key for the average of a truck stop, is 100 parking spaces. We have zero. And then the key, I think the very most important part is the last article. You'll see on the average, the last, last column, the average distance from the site to an interstate intersection is 0.25 of a mile, so a quarter of a mile. We are one mile away from I-55. We are two miles from I-80. I think it's a very key point that we'll look at as we go a little further into the details. So just taking a look, this is the station uh, on the left-hand side of, of the map right here. We are, again, this little green spot. And on the left-hand side, Oglesby, 16 acres, a building that's more than 11,000 square feet, seven fueling lanes, 88 uh, stalls. But the key thing is 0.7 miles from Illinois 39. Next one is, the next one is Pilot in Manuka. Same thing, 7.2, 8,000 square foot building, eight fueling lanes, 84 parking and 0.146 from I-80. The last one on the very east side, so what we did is we looked at one on the west edge of what we consider pliable for, for a truck to go to on the interstate. Uh, 40 miles either way for a truck is, is no real distance. And so on the east side, we have the TA and the pilot, both very big facilities, true truck stops where you have uh, 19 acres, you have 20 fueling lanes, buildings that are 15,000 or almost 7,800, and a lot of fueling lanes. Again, key distance is 0 0.12 miles, 0 0.12 miles. So what our emphasis is, is that all, by all respects, in terms of the chart, every one of those categories, we are dramatically less than a truck stop. We were at a local fueling facility, and what our thoughts are is this is a comparison between Plainfield, the station that we have at Route 30 in Renwick, which is 1.2 miles 
away from Route 55, Interstate 55. Um, it has three lanes for fueling, and um, basically the projections for this site, again, this is uh, Plainfield, and then this is our location here. So these are blow-ups. So this is 1.2 miles from the inter interstate. Uh, and this site has um, three lanes. It does about 3.8 trucks per hour at the peak periods. The peak periods are from 6 to 7 a.m. and from 12 to 2. There's virtually no business after 5, and 91% of the truck business is during the weekdays. And so, when we did this site, the projections were taken for the current roadway traffic. And that's what the sales are coming in. This 3.8 trucks are coming in right on what the projections were, and there was no traffic considered coming from I-55. And the volume that they're actually doing is reinforcing that. Our station is one mile from I-55, two from I-80. And our station is projected that it only has two lanes, and it's going to be closer to our site in South Elgin that has two lanes, where roughly there's one truck per hour, again, with an early morning and an early afternoon peak period, and virtually no business after five, and again, in the 90 percentiles in terms of weekday business. And so that's the extent of our truck traffic. We really consider ourselves a fueling facility and we just separate the truck or diesel from the, from the auto. The next couple of slides are showing existing facilities that are very close to residential. This is Bensonville. It's 3.59 acres compared to we're going to be about 3.8 acres. We have 10 foot of distance from our Sorry, using the wrong device. 10 foot of distance from our pavement to the actual property line along residential. Um, this site has, we've called uh, Bensonville. There have been no complaints either. Rather, they have actually complimented us on uh, the upkeep of the site, uh, the, the neighborhood friendliness of the site. And so we, again, no complaints and actually compliments. Again, we're only 10 feet away from residential property. This is Lombard. It's actually unincorporated DuPage County, 3.11 acres. Again, right along this area right here, we're about 15 feet from residential. And uh, again, we have received no complaints on this site. Uh, again, we're considered a good neighbor. And quite frankly, when we first started these projects, we had people concerned about a gas station coming into the neighborhood. And there were um, complaints and uh, demonstrations in terms of in the public hearings, very similar to what we're having now. As we are in operation years later, we, we see that we are good neighbors to the communities. The next site is North Lake, and that is a little smaller. It's a 2.25 acre site. <coughs> this house just recently sold for the above value from where it was in terms of the market before we built. So we're <coughs> just showing that we do not reduce the property. Actually, the properties just adjacent to us have been assessed for over $50,000 more than what they were assessed prior to us being built. So we just say that we're, we are a good neighbor, we have clean facilities with the new facilities, and um, this facility also has no complaints uh, from any of the neighbors close by. So with that, what we're projecting is actually a 3.86 acre facility down here, and then we're willfully and wantingly putting a, a landscape buffer of 2.5 acres 
that we are proposing to have a conservancy easement, and we're going through the official paperwork uh, to get that prepared if indeed you feel this is a viable uh, development. The, the function of our site, we very purposely separate the truck from the auto traffic. As you can see, there's a right in coming in here for the auto area. And then also we have the access points here. It's a three-way access. Cars could go in here, but, and, but then cars can exit along here in Hobo, and also they can exit through here. So there's very minimal um, interaction with trucks. Trucks, the signage here, if they're going westbound, will enter, come in, fuel, uh, a stopping point if they go into the uh, building, to the fuel desk to clear any account matters, and quite frankly, hopefully buy some food and such. And then they would pull out going south on Hobolt and then either go east or west or, or south. Uh, so the general consensus is just the outer areas for the trucks, the inner areas are for the autos, and then the 4,600 square foot C store is in the middle. Again, there's a typical convenience store. It does not get any of the amenities of a truck stop in terms of sit down restaurant, showers, laundry facilities, et cetera. Uh, with that also, what we're, what we're providing is a buffer area. And this is the reason we're asking for one of the variances at the zoning board of uh, appeals is this, we're trying to keep a 10 foot landscape variance here. We're giving 17 feet to IDOT. And so we have 10 plus 17, so 27, very close to 30 feet. And we want to keep this the maximum distance. So all the other examples I gave you before, we were ranging 5, 10, or 15 feet from residential. Our, our closest point is 140 feet. We're over 300 feet in this area and over 200 feet in this area. Right here, there's a 20 foot, can't even call it a berm, it's a hill that's existing there. I believe it was generated when they were building the original homes that the earth that they excavated, they just stockpiled there. But over the years, there's some mature growth on the trees and we're proposing to leave all that. And then in addition, we're adding a 12 foot high berm along the west side of the property. And then in the conservation easement, we're adding a detention pond that will be surrounded all year with all year screening in terms of two things, the fence, but also with evergreen trees and a double row, double layer of evergreen trees uh, that would be starting at eight feet height when, when they start. Uh, of course, all these dark, uh, the lighter green trees here are existing trees that are at least six inches or above. So all the trees that are less than six inches are just in this green area right in here. So this is still, it looks open, but those are filled with the six inch trees. We're just showing on the survey, and that's typical industry standard, anything six inches or above gets shown on the, on the survey. So we have a, a very dense landscaping separation. <coughs> we have a very high berming. We have a dedicated conservancy um, separation. Again, we only have two lanes. We are approximately going to be about one truck per hour, again, with the key um, points in terms of the early morning and early afternoon would be the peak periods. And then we have the auto in the front, also fully landscaped around and creating a night's nice buffer. All these areas of green, you'll see our additional berms as well. So there's getting a lot of height variety in the site itself. Just uh, for some numbers, for those who, who like numbers, the FAR for this is 0 .017 or only 1.7. Typical FAR can be allowed, it would be like 5%. So you can see we're way below the FAR. The LSR is 0.63 or 63%, a very huge number for commercial, um, for commercial property. 
again, existing traffic along the roadways. On this side of Jefferson is 25,000. On, on the east side of Hobolt on Jefferson is 24.6. And on Hobolt itself is 15,000. Just going through some of the <coughs> items that we have to do. This is the existing survey with the existing uh, church right here. This whole area is zoned R1. This whole area is zoned R4. This whole area is currently zoned B3. And so with, um, with that, what we're planning on doing is you can see that we're subdividing this lot along this area and providing the cons conservation easement all along here. Again, that will be uh, 2.5 acres of, of land dedicated for natural environment, for the trees, for the detention pond, for the hill that's there. And then the 3.8 acres would be the actual development. So this would this is zoned R1, it would stay R1. This is zoned R4, and we're going to a more restrictive zoning to R1 in this area. This little sliver, as it was being read, this little sliver of R4 would go to B3, and then B3 would remain as B3, and this portion right here is R1, which would go as B3. We feel that this whole lot that is R1 I believe was just because it was annexed in. It was, it was a bank, so obviously it wasn't residential at the time, but it was in the county. And when it was annexed into Joliet, it was annexed as residential. The adjacent uh, zoning along the road is for B3, so we feel that we're consistent with the overall plan of Joliet for what this corridor should be. The next slide is just to plan <coughs> easements. There are some easements that are going through the middle or heart of the property right here. Both Comet and NICOR were asking to abandon those. We're working with Comet on that. And then we would wrap the easements around to get back to the switching station for the residential area in the back. This is uh, the preliminary plat. Uh, that you'd be voting on. And this has everything, the old and the new, all on one, one plan. You can see that um, we have additional striping for the pedestrian roadway, uh, the bicycle uh, path that crosses the curb cuts. So we have additional signage and um, markings on that uh, per, per our neighborhood meeting. So with that, I'd like to introduce Lue Abuna. And he is uh, from KLOA, the traffic engineer. And uh, so I invite Lue up. Thank you. This changes the slides back and forth. And then that button is for the, um, for the one. OK. Thank you. Um, my name is uh, Lue Abuna. Uh, last name is spelled A-B-O-O-N-A. I'm a principal uh, with KLOA Traffic Consulting Firm. Uh, we prepared the traffic study for the proposed uh, speedway, and I'll just briefly go over some of the findings, and I'll be happy to answer questions at the end of our presentation. Um, I have a couple slides to uh, go over. Uh, this one uh, just shows an aerial photography of the proposed site, uh, northwest. Northwest corner of the intersection of Jefferson and Hobolt Road. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, and um, uh, so uh, uh, Jefferson is a state highway, uh, as uh, uh, Chris indicated, uh, carries about 25,000 cars a day. Uh, Hobolt Road to the south carries about 15,000 cars a day. Intersection is under traffic signal control. Uh, it's a high capacity intersection, handles a lot of traffic and thus why Speedway obviously wants to locate at this, at this intersection. Typically, uh, Speedways and gas stations in general rely on, on pass-by traffic. Uh, most of their trips that are generated 
are really drawn from the existing traffic, so they don't, they don't bring new traffic to the area. Um, that obviously helps reduce the impact. Uh, studies been done and shows about 60 to 70 percent of those trips during the rush hour are what we consider pass-by trips. So the additional traffic to the roadway system is not going to be uh, significant. Um, the, uh, the site is going to be served by access of both roads. Uh, we tried to minimize the impact on both by limiting the number of curb cuts and the design. Uh, on Jefferson, we will have uh, a ride-in at this location, about 300 feet west of the intersection. Uh, that's going to primarily serve the uh, passenger vehicles. And then west of there, about 200 feet, will be a three-quarter access. Uh, we'll accommodate ride-in, left-in, and ride-out only. Uh, this will be primarily for truck traffic as well as for passenger vehicles. We will be widening Jefferson Street to provide an eastbound left turn lane. Uh, so cars coming from the west and trucks will have its own lane uh, to store waiting for gaps in the traffic stream uh, to minimize the impact on the through traffic on Jefferson Street. Um, exiting traffic will be obviously limited to right turns only. Uh, will be under stop sign control. And as Chris indicated, in order to minimize the impact on the bike path, uh, uh, w there will be signage, obviously the stop sign, as well as the uh, striping to indicate uh, the crossing of, of those locations. Uh, on Hobart Road, we'll have two curb cuts, uh, one here for the passenger vehicles, and the second one further north for the truck access. Uh, a couple of improvements we're making along Hobart Road. Um, one is to uh, uh, increase the width of the street. Um, as it approaches the intersection. Uh, currently, there are two lanes approaching the intersection. However, the storage for those lanes is very limited. Uh, we will be extending that uh, to about 150 feet. So we'll have two lanes, each with 150 feet of storage versus the 30 to 40 feet that currently exists. So that would help uh, accommodate the additional traffic as well as manage the operations of the intersection. Uh, we are also uh, providing a westbound right turn lane that starts at the corner of the intersection. Uh, that would be uh, serving cars that are entering the site from the east, uh, right turns here, and then right turns at the three-quarter access. And we'll be modifying the uh, corner radius of the northwest corner of the intersection uh, to allow for the trucks to be able to make the exit onto Jefferson Street going westbound uh, without impacting the curb and the signal equipment. So there will be work being done at the intersection, work will be done along Hobart, and then also on Jefferson. Um, we submitted the traffic study to the city, and as you heard from staff, um, uh, we, uh, the study was reviewed and approved uh, by the Public Works Department. We have also submitted the uh, study to IDOT, which has jurisdiction over Jefferson, um, and we are waiting for their uh, review comments, and we, you know, we'll continue our um, uh, application with them in order to get the permits. But overall, the study showed that uh, given the fact that uh, this kind of use relies on existing traffic, together with the improvements that uh, we are proposing, uh, that the impact uh, will be managed and will not be significant to the area roadways or intersection. Uh, with that, I conclude my presentation and um, um, turn it over to Todd Abrams uh, to talk about the civil side civil. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Todd Abrams. I'm the principal civil engineer at the WT Group, uh, principal civil engineer that worked on this project. Um, I'm here just to talk briefly about some of the existing uh, and proposed drainage patterns on the property, uh, as well as some of the existing and proposed uh, discharges uh, from the existing property. Um, what we're looking at <coughs> on this exhibit here is essentially our uh, essentially our survey for the property. Um, uh, really, the, the drainage pattern on, on site is split into two separate areas. A uh, larger area to the north is approximately 4.75 acres, uh, which drains uh, primarily to a 12-inch storm sewer that drains east uh, under Hobalt. Um, and then also uh, an approximate one and a half acre area that drains uh, south uh, towards Jefferson uh, which is then picked up with uh, two existing 12-inch storm sewers uh, that drain uh, south uh, and to the east. Uh, existing discharges uh, from the property uh, include uh, uh, 7 CFS, 7 cubic feet per second 
uh, to the existing 12 inch storm sewer that drains east uh, to the creek, which is just east of the subject property. Uh, then an approximately uh, three and a half CFS uh, drains uh, south to the two 12 inch storm sewers uh, that are within the IDOT right away. So the, the total existing discharge from the property uh, is approximately 10 CFS. Next slide <clears throat> includes um, our landscaping and then as well our, uh, our two uh, native planted de detention ponds. Larger of the pond is uh, north of the, uh, the diesel lanes uh, and then there's also a smaller pond uh, kind of south of, of the uh, proposed uh, diesel lanes. Um, total detention provided in the two ponds is, is approximately two and a half acre feet. Uh, what's that mean? It's it essentially um, uh, the proposed discharge will all go to the these uh, existing 12 inch storm sewer that is in Hobalt and the total proposed release rate from both ponds will be approximately 0 0.70 CFS. So in the proposed condition of the, the total discharge uh, to this sewer is about 7 CFS would be reduced to 0.7. Um, essentially, that concludes uh, my presentation. I think we turned over to questions. Thank you. We have one more slide to show, and then we'll <coughs> go back to this plan. Uh, the next slide is just the architectural elements. Again, we are a full masonry bearing building. All four walls are, are masonry, uh, no studs involved with the exterior walls. Um, it's a commitment to the community by Speedway of saying that we're here for, for a long time. The actual shape of the roof is a hip style architectural shingled roof to be a little bit more um, in contact with the residential flavor. And then also all the columns at the canopy will also be, um, will also have the brick to match the building. Trash enclosure will also be encased in the brick, so it will be continuous in there. Uh, some elements of signage, the only thing on the, the north side is a, is a reader board for the CFL canopy. All other signage is either on the ends of the canopy or on the north side, uh, I'm sorry, on the south side of the canopy. So with that, I'll just back up the slide to the plan, and then we're, we're available for questions. Um, with what the commission is, I think, I guess all you guys stayed here for this. Is there any questions or comments from the citizens on this project? One at a time, folks, give your name and your address. Diane Hacker, 3226 Karen Court. Um, I'm here to ask you to vote no on the Speedway gas station at this location. Um, it, bringing in a gas station is definitely going to bring in more traffic. The traffic right now is pretty much maxed out. Joliet Junior College has expanded their campus over the past several years. They currently have 16,000 students. This has added a lot more traffic both to Jefferson and Hobart. Also a few years ago, Joliet Township moved their bus barn to Olympic Boulevard behind the college. The buses travel on Hobart four times a day with leaving and returning back to the bus barn. There's also the Troy buses that travel Hobart to pick up and drop off students to the elementary and middle schools. The Pace buses travel on Jefferson and Hobart. There are warehouses south of I-80 to Route 6 and even more warehouses on Olympic Boulevard east side behind Dunkin' Donuts and west side between the college and Heroes Restaurant. There are also warehouses on McDonough Street, which the semis travel on Jefferson and Hobo to get to the McDonough warehouses. Advantage Truck Driving School moved in behind the airport. These training drivers drive all day long up and down Hobo. The landfill is also off Hobo, so the garbage trucks drive Hobo six days a week all day long. There are two gas stations at Hobo and I-80 and a Sitco gas station with three pumps behind the airport for semis. Also, Mark's gas station and the Shell gas station are right there at I-80, which basically is about a block and a half from where this proposed gas station is, so we don't need another gas station. Um, most intersections go north-south and east-west. 
Hobolt dead ends. So traffic is usually backed up on Hobolt trying to turn left. Um, this intersection is also heavily traveled by all residents in Joliet because it's the only on-ramp to I-55 besides having to go out to the mall. Many vehicles also use this intersection to get from Joliet to Shorewood. The bike path goes right by where the entrance and exits would be at the gas station, which would put bikers' lives in jeopardy. I foresee many fatalities. There's also very little room on the north side of the Jefferson <coughs> where the mall strip is for vehicles and semis to try and turn out of. This would be jam-ups of semis trying to get back onto Hobolt to return to I-80. By putting a gas station right at the corner would definitely block traffic to almost a standstill, which would cause more vehicle accidents. Since Hobolt is only a single turn lane, semis would be backed up um, for multiple light changes. This will impact Fire Station 7 trying to head to an emergency call. The fire trucks and ambulances will have to drive against traffic on Hobolt to get to Jefferson Street, which will slow down response time for people who need emergency um, responses. Um, if speedways to put in a gas station at this intersection, then once the new Hobolt Bridge is built, that will connect Center Point to I-80. This will increase more semi-traffic going down to try and refuel there when they can easily just go down Route 6 to refuel at the other uh, speedway that's down there. We also know that Route 53 is 95% semis. We do not want Hobolt to turn into the same way. Not only will the residents who live off Hobolt be impacted drastically, but all of Joliet residents who heavily travel this intersection will be impacted. Um, so I feel Speedway can find another location in Joliet to help bring in revenue. So again, I ask that you please vote no. Okay, thank you, Karen. Is there anybody else that had a comment or a question from the citizens? Ryan, you got four minutes basically, Max. It's just so. Uh, Joe Makushka, 244 Stephen Lane. Um, first of all, I'm sure they're not, Speedway's not making this big investment to service one truck per hour. If they could get 10 or 20 trucks per hour, I think they would really be happy with that. I oppose this, um, this um, uh, change in uh, zoning. Um, in fact, residents in the area have already expressed unanimously their opposition to this 24-hour Speedway gas station truck stop at a neighborhood meeting. Among other reasons, we are concerned about the serious safety impacts this project presents. Speedway is requesting B3 zoning for the property. This zoning is for destination-oriented businesses with a large percentage of customers arriving by automobile and trucks, including semi-trailers, and serves as a high-traffic magnet. It will eventually be attracting semi-trucks off I-55 and I-80 to an area of, of bringing more big, truck and big trucks into the city. There already exist 13 gas stations in the surrounding area, three on Jefferson Street, just west of the proposed location, including the Sitco truck stop, on, and, um, and eight located on East Jefferson Street. So we don't need another gas station. The very short section of North Hobolt, which is about one block in length, already services six small businesses located at this intersection, which have entries and exits that will directly be across from the entries and exits of speed, speedways, autos, and trucks, and semi-trailers. In addition, this short section of North Hobolt also serves as the entry and exits of the upscale gated community of the Cloister, which is being developed for 35 homes. This short section of North Hobolt will be dangerously overloaded with truck, truck traffic and car traffic entering and exiting the, the cloister, the six small businesses, and many cars and semi-trailers exiting Speedway. Speedway's request to eliminate parking on North Hobolt will prevent Johnny's Restaurant from receiving supplies since those vehicles are unable to unload in their small parking area. Eastbound auto, uh, Eastbound auto and truck traffic will have to make left turns across westbound traffic to enter Speedway, and most truck, tra uh, most truck traffic will exit onto North Hobolt, making it overloaded and dangerous. In addition, the Speedway project will dangerously impact the existing bike path that will require bikers to cross Speedway's three Jefferson Street entry and exits for cars and semi-trailers. 
Um, it was already mentioned that uh, the Joliet Junior College has an enrollment of 15,000 students that use this intersection. This plan is just a picture. You must visit the area and visualize cars and especially semi-trailers simultaneously making left turns and crossing traffic on Jefferson Street to, to enter uh, and exit Speedway and having cars and semi-trailers entering and ex exiting Speedway off North Hobo in the midst of cars entering and exiting six small businesses and the cloister, which will have about 35 homes. Speedway is requesting B3 zoning and a convoluted reconfiguration of the intersection to, it, to attract and maximize the volume of cars and semi-trailers for their business, but which will be detrimental to life and safety. In addition, it will negatively impact the valuation and quality of life to the existing surrounding businesses and neighboring developments. The 24-hour Speedway gas station truck stop is just a very dangerous and inappropriate project for the land use at this intersection. A B2 or ideal a B1 or IB zoning for this land use would attract a more suitable development for the area, which would safely fit in with the existing developments. The Joliet Airport, the existing small business, yes, sir. the Messiah Lutheran Church, the bike path, the upscale cloister development, and the residential developments on South Holbolt. Let this project not become another sit-go mistake. You gotta wrap it up, I'm sorry, yeah, I got it. Is there anybody else from the citizens that would like to uh, speak? Your name and address, please. Good afternoon, uh, Ken Carlson. 20, 2801 Black Road. I'm an attorney in Joliet. I represent Dorothy Brown. Um, her and her husband, Bits Brown, bought a house in the northwest corner of the Cloisters when the Cloisters first became a subdivision. As she now owns a number of lots in that subdivision. Uh, Mrs. Brown is opposed to this project. Uh, she doesn't believe it's suitable for this project. Um, while Mr. Makushka is not going to take a chance to tell you what his biggest concern is on one issue, it's having truck fueling in his backyard, which is ultimately the backyards of other lots in the cloisters. Um, it seems to me that that's just, there's other places to have a diesel fueling station. And whether we want to call this a truck stop or a fueling station, it's like calling an apple an orange. I mean, if you want to call an apple an orange, it's an orange. Uh, but this is a truck stop. Now, you've got potential improvements from the south with which could reroute trucks which could create real issues um, and if that's what ultimately the the vision is for Hobolt Road then I suppose this is appropriate um, but I think certainly for a lot of the residents of Long Hobolt Road certainly for the residents of the Cloisters and Mrs. Brown that's not what Hobolt Road was ever supposed to be uh, nor should it be um, I, I think just what I what I'd ask you to do is take a look at the traffic study. Um, I think when I go by there, when Mrs. Brown tries to leave her subdivision, that intersection does not perform well at all during peak hours. If you want to add traffic, it becomes worse. Um, I think I'd like to understand from their traffic report, as I read that traffic report, the underlying assumption is based on counts that were taken on June 6th and the college kids aren't there. So let's put the college kids back in it. Um, I, I think the final comment I would make is with respect to the FFA, FAA, um, I would only caution you because as I read that letter, what that letter from the FAA says is we are going, we don't see any obstructions that create an issue. What that letter does not say is what their policy is is when they go through a review, they look at compatible uses within what's called the RPZ, the Runway Protection Zone. So as you guys are all probably aware, there's a grass strip, one of the runways, that is in the south, in the northeast corner of the airport. And the Runway Protection Zone runs right over this property. The FAA's policy with respect to that when the runway protection zone is owned by the airport would be, we want to look at your use, and if your use creates an assemblage of people, we don't like those uses, because the point we're trying to do is protect people and property, and we don't want the potential for airplanes to crash 
in the runway protection zone. Um, so I would just suggest at some point, perhaps staff should contact the FAA and get a clarification on the implication that is being portrayed with respect to that letter. Um, with that, I think my client would ask that you consider opposing the map, excuse me, not recommending the map amendment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other citizen? Don't start that clock until we get there. Okay, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> hang on. I got to push reset. Ready? Uh, my name is Drew McFarlane. Uh, my address is 2859 George Avenue. I have farmed 200 feet from the lot line of this de <clears throat> development since my dad died in 88, and he farmed it since 1952. Uh, we've had pumpkins, gourds, squash business out on Jefferson Street. I'm sure a lot of you have even been there. Due to water problems this year, we probably won't have a crop first time since 1952. And it's because the creek that everybody keeps draining into, Crest Hill dumps all their sewer into the, or sorry, they dump all their affluent after sewer recovery into that creek. And everybody keeps dumping more and more water. There's a 300 foot wide beaver dam, 800 feet south of where the discharge for their Speedway gas station is gonna be. It's been there for the last 10 years. I can't get the county, I can't get the forest preserve, I can't get anybody to break it up. It raises the water level of Rock Run Creek by three feet at least. It's flooding my fields. We were able to farm all these years, except for now, it's just getting worse and worse, and the beavers have raised that dam higher and higher. So if Joliet doesn't remove that dam, we're adding more surface area from the roof, from the asphalt, all this, to Rock Run Creek, and it's getting worse. It's going to flood upstream. It's going to affect a lot of people, even behind Timberline. Um, I'm worried about the cut-ins on the highway. Our driveway at the farm is the lowest point on Jefferson Street going east and west. So all the water that those 12-inch mains that they were talking about that drain across, the, across Jefferson Street to the airport side, they were designed to handle the water of the highway, not the added surface area that they're going to add with turn lanes and I talked to Speedway this morning, they called me at home, and they didn't assure me that they were adding more drains across Jefferson Street to handle the added volume of surface area that'll drain into those. The other thing is, nobody in Joliet gets to drain their sept or their sump pumps into the city storm sewer systems, although this pond is gonna be able to use the stormwater system to drain into it to get to the creek. Only businesses get to do that, I mean, even homeowners don't. Um, I got to talk fast. Mm -hmm. So I'm really worried about water. It's a serious issue. It's a serious, I watch, I've lived there all these years, I drive it every day, and the water rushes down Jefferson Street, and if it doesn't hit all these sewers, it builds up. And I'm really worried about that. By, um, I'm worried about the safety of the, I, I watch the traffic, it's horrible. That's going to be business someday. That's going to be tax dollars for Joliet. It's the wrong business, it's too busy, a little quirk on 80, and that's backed up all the way to Shorewood coming in because that's the only way to get around to get back on 80 to avoid all these traffic problems. And even WBBM says 80 through Joliet is clogged, or 80 is open, they even make that point. There's nothing wrong with business, it's the wrong business for that location. Um, The other thing I worry about, the bike path. I watch all the bikers, the fathers bringing their kids with the little trailers behind the bikes, and they're gonna be turning in front of unlighted entrances coming from both directions, semis turning in. And these semis are gonna be backed up in front of my area, my farm, and if I sell that someday, the value will be down because you won't have access. I know you're watching the time. Um, and it's too bad that I only have four minutes and everybody else that's selling this project has whatever. Um, the, uh, the other thing I'm going to say is the airport. I've been a flyer. I've, I had flight training. My uncle sold aircraft for years. I have a lot of experience with this. And I can just see up at, Elk, uh, up at Oshkosh a big picture of the Joliet Airport and this gas station. And it says, go to Joliet and fuel up because you can have a gas station on one end, a gas station on the other, and take your chances fueling up. Hey, sir. Yeah. Do you ever see an aircraft carrier with a gas station on each end of the flight deck? No. Nope. I mean, this is absolutely ludicrous. You're, you're, you're so I would say, please vote against it, but keep in mind that that'll be developed someday, and it's good. I do have one question for you. So you get sure. to the board. Um, 
the, the creek you're talking about is the one that's behind the cluster, right? Yes, it is. And fortunately, we have Jan Quillman here, our council person on the job, checking everything out. And I bet she knows somebody, because we do have people that go out and fix the beavers. We have to hire them. And you know, I used to go out and knock that out with a state permit. It's gotten too big. It's huge. Juliet has done it. I know I've been involved in that in the past. They have to get the trapper out again, because the beavers are back. But I mean, it needs to be done. Thank you. You can't keep adding water to this. I mean, it can only handle so much. Thanks for your time. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Hi, uh, Larry Burrich, I'm with the Joliet Park District. I'll just simply read a couple things, thank you. Um, Joliet Park District is proud of its relationship and partnership with the City of Joliet. As a result of this continued collaboration, Joliet is viewed as one of the leaders in park and recreation throughout the state of Illinois. The Joliet Park District has always been a supporter of economic development throughout the community and has taken many steps to add parks, facilities, and programming to enhance the growth the City of Joliet has experienced over the last few decades. Today we are reaching out to you regarding the proposed Speedway service station development project to be constructed and operated on the northwest corner of Hobart Road and Jefferson Street, Route 52, directly across from the Joliet Regional Airport. The Joliet Park District opposes this project for the following reasons of concern. Number one, safety. The proposed structure is in the direct path of the grass runway at the Joliet Regional Airport with only 689 feet separating the two. Two, the explosive component combined with an aircraft having trouble would have a ca catastrophic result. The risk is not limited to airplanes as it would affect pedestrians and automobile traffic. <coughs> Under our grant assurance guidelines, we are required to the extent reasonable to take action to restrict the use of land adjacent to or the immediate vicinity of the airport to activities and purposes compatible with normal airport operations, including landing and takeoff of aircraft. Restricted navigable air traffic approach and departure patterns which would result in loss of revenue to the airport and aviation industry. Retention pond would increase the risk of bird strikes with aircraft. Proposed structure interferes with the RPZ, as was mentioned earlier, and our ALP airport layout plan. Existing obstructions like Sitco gas station are already impeding service and growth. The Joliet Park District has previously met with the developer as well as the Speedway representatives to discuss their concerns and reasons for opposing this project. While the de developer has gone through the proper channels and filed the FAA Form 7460-1 before proceeding, it is important to note that the FAA form addressed, addresses only the height restrictions at one point of the building. It does not include any of the canopies, light poles, or signage. Further from form submittal is required to the developer to cover all points related to the project. Uh, on Thursday, July 11, 2019, the Joliet Park District attended a neighborhood meeting hosted by the Universal, Universalist Unitarian Church of Joliet, located at 3401 West Jefferson and facilitated by representatives from the Speedway Corporation. There were over 150 attendees and several members representing the city of Joliet in their respective roles. There was not one person in attendance that was in support of the Speedway Development Project at this time. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to voice our concerns regarding the Joliet Park District's opposition of this project. Thank I you. would remind that the airport's been there since 1930 and is a historic landmark. Thank you. Thank you. Was there an, anybody else that... Uh... My name is Jim Kaplan. I live at 2100 Midhurst Lane. And I don't know if this is going to be approved or not, but as a bicyclist, I have some comments that go into a little more detail than just general concerns. The, uh, the right turn in, uh, as I see the developer's plan, they plan on putting just a generic green bike route sign. That wouldn't tell people much of anything. There's a bike route on, maybe there's a bike route on Route 52. I would suggest if it's built, they put some kind of a yellow warning sign that says, you know, watch for, for bicyclists. Uh, for the right, for the two exits, uh, it's pretty standard all along the bike path to have signs where road crosses that that says do not block the bike path. Uh, the man who owns the farm up the road, he's, he's a good guy, but people pulling out of there all the time block the bike path. And uh, so I would suggest there be some signage to that effect. Lastly, the left turn into the, the uh, uh, station is just insane. Uh, there's almost nonstop traffic on Jefferson. Then the light turns, turns red for them. Immediately you have left turn traffic on Hobolt going on to Jefferson. So you're going to have people sitting there waiting for that short break in the traffic. 
And then they're going to turn left, having no idea what's, what bicyclists are coming from behind them from the west. So the idea of having, you know, having a left turn into that, I think, is just nuts. And if it's built that way, I'll just set a timer for the first accident to, to occur after the station opens. Okay, thank you. Is there any other citizen? My name is Fred Hibbert. I live at 3425 Christine Avenue, Joliet. My wife and I have lived in the Joliet subdivision of Cambridge across from Holbilt Road from JJC for over 21 years. And along with the residential subdivisions of College Park, Springwood, and Silverleaf, the 15,000 students of JJC and others, we regularly drive on Holbilt Road. Suddenly out of left field, we became aware of a new car and semi-truck gasoline and diesel fueling station that was proposed to be erected on the northwest corner of the intersection of Hobolt Road and Jefferson Street, and one of the busiest intersections in Joliet. This immediately caught our attention. Our main concern is that this, if this proposal comes to pass, it will greatly increase the semi-truck traffic on the length of Hobolt Road from Riverboat Road drive to Jefferson Street. Not only would this be a safety issue, but also would contribute to the bottlenecks already occurring at a presently congested intersection. He advised that a tractor-trailer semi-truck can be 80 feet long, effectively taking up the space of four full-size cars or five subcompacts. On Monday and Tuesday, July 15th and 16th, 2019, I personally conducted a one-hour semi-truck survey at each of the Holbolt Road intersections uh, with Jefferson Street, so moving south to McDonough Street, then Ho Olympic Boulevard, and finally a Riverboat Center Drive, the farthest south. McDonough Street semis primarily serve industries east of Joliet Road while semis on Olympic Boulevard and Riverboat Center Drive serve warehouses located both east and west of Hobolt Road. Results of my surveys highlighted at least two important facts. The stretch of Hobolt Road between McDonough Street and Jefferson Street during the hour survey was traveled by 18 semi-trucks, currently no small number. And two, the intersection with the most semi-traffic was the one farthest south, almost two miles from Jefferson Street. There I counted in just one hour 153 semi-trucks. Of those 48 semis heading east on Riverboat Drive turned right onto southbound Holboat Road toward the intersection with east-westbound I-80 and east-westbound Route 6. And an additional 78 semis heading north on Fulbolt Road from the intersections with either I-80 or Route 6, turn left onto westbound Riverboat Center Drive. The remainder of the 153 semis traveled straight through the intersection or made other turns. If even a small fraction of this semi-traffic were to travel on Fulbolt Road the two miles north to refuel at the proposed station, it would create a nightmare. But I don't know why a trucker would choose uh, whose destination is the east, west, or south would travel two miles north to fuel up. I would think that a fisherman who wants to catch fish would go where the fish are. In other words, why not construct a fueling station near I-80 or Route 6 where the action is? If the residents of Cambridge, College Park, Springwood, and Silverleaf, and others fail to convince Speedway and City Hall that the station is not wanted at the proposed location, I respectfully implore the city to immediately place a vehicle maximum weight limit on Holbolt Road between Jefferson Street and McDonough Street, low enough to exclude semis from traveling this intersection of highway. This section of highway. This would prevent the intersection of sir. Jefferson Street and Holbolt Road from becoming a disaster area. That, sir, you had to wrap it up. That, you have four, four minutes. I'm sorry. Okay. But thank you. Anyone? Name and address? Pastor Dave Nygaard. I live at 901 Douglas Street. I'm a pastor at Messiah Lutheran, which is kitty corner to where the uh, proposed speedway will be built. 
I've been a pastor there for 32 years, and we have about 900 members. I know that intersection. Probably three, four, or five times a day, there are times when people cannot come in and out of our uh, church parking lot. We have two entrances. It's always because of the Joliet Junior College traffic coming back and forth. Uh, I heard uh, this man who spoke for Speedway say at a previous meeting <clears throat> that this building will not impact or add to the traffic. That might be true, but I, it won't improve the traffic there either. Three or four times a day, uh, the traffic on, on Hobalt there at the intersection is backed all the way up to McDonald's by the highway. If there's an accident on, on the highway or construction, it's rerouted right on that same route. Uh, this route is, also, is used a lot for uh, first responders from the fire station, from ambulances coming from the community. They already have a hard time getting in and out of traffic when there's an emergency. Uh, there's seldom a Sunday when I'm preaching that an ambulance doesn't go by. This is a, a main thoroughfare. Uh, I don't see how this will add to or improve or help the travel there. I think the people who built their nice houses behind the Unitarian Church, uh, they built there with a certain expectation of uh, safety and quietness and community and beauty and nature. It's a wooded area. We built on that corner, I think, with that same idea. This is a beautiful place. Let's keep it that way. Why not make that corner into, add, add to the uh, bike path and make it more of a, an add-on to Inwood Park and let it be a beautiful welcome to our city rather than another cause of congestion. But thank you for allowing me to talk. Thank you. My name is Patricia Burke. I live at 705 Collins Avenue in Joliet. I also am a member of Masada <coughs> Lutheran Church, and I'm director of safety and security at the church. Um, so we're always concerned with safety of all the residents, but particularly of our members. And uh, during our Sunday school evenings, during weekends, uh, we have homeschool, the uh, children that attend our, our facility twice a week. Um, bringing the gas station and convenience store increases the crime rate in our area by at least 8.3%. Uh, bringing guns, drugs, and murders into the area is not something that any of us want to see. Um, the existing Speedway gas station is not a model citizen or not a model gas station for us to um, aspire to. Um, I think you take your life in your hand when you go to that existing gas station. Um, I know the Speedway representatives mentioned that there's been no complaints from neighbors that ha are at the previous uh, or at other gas stations with neighborhoods near there. But I wonder, is the neighbor supposed to call the uh, city every time a delivery truck is making a delivery at 3 a.m. and you have to hear the banging of the doors and the noise? I think you either get sick of it and move out of the area or you just deal with it. Um, the drainage of the creek was mentioned that dumps into behind the church and that would cause additional problems, especially if the beaver and the dams are not taken care of. And then air quality is impacted. Uh, air pollution from diesel trucks increase, increases the cancer risk. So based on that, um, the members of Messiah are not in favor of this and we ask the commission to not vote for this either. Thank you. Thank you. Any other answer for something else? My name is Rosemary Fabian. I live at 420 Wintry Lane, but I'm from New Lenox, Illinois. Um, I have a question for the gentleman from Speedway. He says he has three friendly neighbors. I'd like to know if those friendly neighbors have an airport by them, 15,000 college students, and a bike path those friendly neighbors. Um, the kids from the, from the college, now they're kids, and it's against the law to text. They'll be texting. They won't be watching for the semis. I wouldn't want that on my conscience, and I don't think you would either. The bike path, the young children, they're, they're quick, they're fast. 
I wouldn't want that on my conscience either. I'm here to support my brother, whose house is right directly behind the gas station where these semis are going to be fueling. Bought a home, built it, proud of it, along with Dottie Brown, who lives there. And now all of a sudden, my brother's going to have a gas station in his backyard. Speedway paints a very pretty picture. I live in New Lenox, and as I said at one meeting back in July, they're going to have buffers, eight foot, um, eight foot uh, evergreens. If you go on New Lenox Road, right where the new cold storage building is, they have a buffer. They have eight foot evergreen trees, and above that is I don't know. 40-foot concrete building, that's what they look at when they look out the front door. I don't think they wanted that either. They've been there a long time. I'm afraid to go on Interstate 80 myself with all the semis. That's all I got to say. I hope you vote no. Thank you, ma'am. Is there any other citizen that would like to... Don't count till I get there. I won't. I won't. The only reason I'm speaking, my name is Pauline Makushka. I'm the wife of this good man who walked me up here, Joseph. The only reason I'm up here is because he couldn't finish. <laughs> Thanks for giving me his few minutes that I can have. <laughs> I can hardly walk, but it's worth it. They didn't tell you they made a little report on the accidents that occurred in the last five years and why they occurred at that corner. 105 accidents in five years. 105. And 55 of those were rear ends and 39 were when they were turning. And that was just regular traffic. And they're telling us, oh, we're just going to have one truck come in once in a while. Whoever would consider building a 24-hour gas station truck stop at the entry of a gated upscale community, would you like to live where we're at? This is the wrong project at the wrong location. The jefferson Hoboken intersection is already a very busy intersection which has experienced a good number of accidents and will become even more congested and dangerous with the large semi-trailer trucks entering and exiting the speedway. Please, you've heard everybody say what we're saying. Yeah, you're gonna get taxes, but if they can move someplace more safe, you'll still get the taxes. Just don't put them where they're going to kill us. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Gary Alley. I live at 426 Columbia Street. And i also a member of Joy of the Side of the Church. He, the gentleman said that the near, he, Referred to Plainfield. There's a, a speedway east of Larkin. You guys live in Joliet. There's two speedways on Black Road on 59. We don't need another speedway. There's no gas station. You don't need the traffic. Thank you, sir. They did it in, they did the traffic in Juco Bazaar. Thank you. 95% of traffic, isn't it? I'll be very brief. Mike Kerwin. I live at 65 Longwood Court up at Pilcher Park, and I'm also a tenant of the airport. Uh, the gentleman from the Park District filled you in perfectly with uh, what the situation is out there. I am FAA retired, and I'm not sure if Speedway, when they were asking for their permission, told them what type of facility was going to be there, nor, from what I understand, did they contact the Bureau of Aeronautics from IDOT. And to my way of thinking, with an airport right across from your property, that would be a minimum that you would want to do. 
If you would ask me in an FAA capacity, would I put a fueling station across from a runway that goes right over the top? I think you know what my answer would be. And so would the FAAs. So something's missing. Okay. And I know that you folks have heard all this, and I know that you've done this many times, and I have confidence that you believe in what you've heard and that you'll make the proper decision. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there any other citizen? Is there any comments? <laughs> My name is Janet Anzel Horn. I live at, live at 809 Juni Court. I was born and raised in Joliet. Uh, Pam Cavalieri, she was here at the meeting at the church. She was also here last month. I don't think she's here. Have you seen, I just wanted to ask you if you had seen the petition that she had started a month ago. No, I haven't seen it. No. May I show it to you? Uh, sure. <clears throat> oh, I've seen this. You've seen this? Yeah. Oh, okay. You have seen it? I haven't seen it. I don't go on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> There's 782 signatures that have signed this already, <coughs> and just as everyone else has said here, we're all saying the same thing. Please, don't let this go through. It's, there's no, to me, there's no good in it. It's just awful. So. 782, is it all from Juliet? Yeah. Yep. Well, that's big to hear. Okay, I yep. see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, if you can all think like, all citizens or civilians, whatever the heck, just people that would just, it doesn't look right, that doesn't feel good. And again, I plead, if you could not have this constructed. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Any other citizen? Any questions or comments from the commissioners? Does uh, somebody have a comment or question they'd like to I ask or say? I've got a few of them. Uh, from Mr. Kalashevsky. Um, are you planning on putting advertisement, okay, up at 55 and 52 and at 80 and uh, Hobolt to where the gas station will be? I don't think there's any plans because they have done that for Plainfield site and they've showed that they had no increase in volume on the Plainfield site. Okay, you've, uh, how many gas stations actually are in the proximity of Joliet and Crest Hill in this area? Uh, Speedways. We have not. Well, Pardon? We have not actually counted the number of gas stations. I believe there are several though. There, there are some uh, Speedways in that, but. When we look at the market and we see the number of house tops and the number of businesses, we see the general uh, gallons allowed, which we had on the slide there was 250 million gallons annually. And then we look at the number of stations and determine if it's viable to uh, show our station in it. Oh, I, I, one of the questions I was asked you is earlier, and you presented this in your slide pro, uh, presentation of what a good neighbor you are and had some of the things what they're doing in Chicago with a picture of all the kids. And I'm not aware of anything that you've done to Joliet, and you've had these, these gas stations here for quite a long time. Is there something specifically where you're involved with the community here and done stuff that you know of? Well, they do all the local raising for the Children's Miracle Network. That's not just Chicago, that's all in different sectors. I, uh, one company, I know one, one, one of the things I'm thinking about is, uh, um, the, and one, I think somebody brought it up of, you know, a truck an hour. You're going to have to have more than a truck an hour. I know I've tried to get out of the cemetery that sometimes, I mean, the people in the cemetery aren't going to complain, but trying to get out of there, I, I thought I was going to be living in the cemetery before getting out on Jefferson Street. And, and, to be honest with you, especially when you can turn left, you have a left-hand turn to get in there with truck traffic, you know, you'll never, some of the traffic's going to be hideous. Well, I'd like to have Lulea Buna address that, the, the traffic engineer, but in terms of the one truck per hour is literally the numbers that we have for the South Elgin site that's on Route 31. 
very similar traffic numbers on the roadway, and uh, that is what is occurring historically on, at that site. And that is a two-lane dispenser. Yes, uh, Senator, this is four-lane here. This is, oh, what, you this, know, this is a two-lane that we have. We're proposing a two-lane. Uh, we're talking two-lane CFL. Are you going to be able to uh, turn in off of Jefferson Street? Okay, I see you can go turn in uh, while you're going westbound on Jefferson, correct? I, I left my pointer if I could get that. I'll let the way. You'll be able to turn left hand turn from the eastbound lane going across the other. That's my point is the, the yeah. tie up the traffic there, yeah. it'll be all the way out to I 55. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, uh, just to clarify, there'll be uh, three movements allowed at that intersection. Uh, uh, right in, left in, and right out. We are not allowing le left turns out. Uh, so someone right coming in. eastbound on Jefferson not, can, will not be able to turn into the gas station, is that correct? Coming in, they will, yes. And that's why we're providing that dedicated left turn lane. You mean on the Hobalt? Are you talking about on Jefferson? You're talking, no, I'm talking about Jefferson Street. Yes. So Somebody that's eastbound on Jefferson, yes, yes. will they be able to, they'll have to go oh, to Hobolt yeah. no. to be able to get in there? No, they can, they can go to Hobolt if they want, but they can also turn left at this location right here. Oh. So we're widening traffic. Yes. We're widening. Yeah. I just uh, noticed that it was. We are widening le, uh, Jefferson to provide a left turn lane that doesn't exist today. So there'd be a widening, a substantial widening of the roadway involved. Uh, to provide that left turn lane to allow trucks and passenger vehicles to s to sit in that lane so they have a waiting for gas. They'll have a protected turn lane, yes. but um, you know, how, that's going to back up into the other lanes. It, it will not. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's designed to meet IDOT's criteria. It's over 200 feet long. Um, and, um, it's but we, we haven't gotten anything back from IDOT on your propositions to them. Well, I mean, we're, we're going through it right now, but we, no, we have not. Officially, we have not, but we are going through it. We've designed it in anticipation of what their requirements are. That's why we've restricted the access drives, uh, like the right in only for the uh, passenger uh, entrance uh, and, and the three-quarter access in anticipation of uh, their requirements. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, questions or uh, comments from the commissioners? You put a left hand lane right here. You have to turn left at the right. You can't sir, turn in sir, here. Sir, sir, no. sir. Take a seat, please. Uh, we're, we're able to respond to some comments uh, that were made, but we're just waiting if there's any more questions here. Or comments have, from the commissioner? Have you ever ha thought of having the, the gas station without the truck stop? Uh, no, in terms of the volume and in terms of the, the it would not clear the ROI. Okay. Again, one truck is worth about five to six cars in terms of fueling. The, the trucks have 100 gallon tanks on each side, so 200 gallons. So when they fill up, that's a very large sale. So one truck. It isn't a one-to-one -one comparison. Okay. Thank you. Um, anybody, any other commissioners have a question or comment of any kind? So I guess a question is on the floor whether there's a motion for or against. Could, could we address Z2-19? Right, he wants to address Excuse me? the question. Well, there are a couple items that we'd like to get some clarity on, if that's possible. Go ahead. Go uh, I'd like to bring Todd. Abrams up in terms of the drainage, uh, the questions that were made there. We just want to make sure that's clear. Thank you. Uh, there were some questions or uh, concerns about the, the drainage leaving the property. I uh, just kind of wanted to run through uh, what's going on in the existing condition right now again and then also what will happen in, in the after condition when <coughs> the pond and the detention systems constructed um, <coughs> again uh, today um, there the site drains what we call unrestricted uh, to the existing storm sewers that are in Hobolt and in Jefferson um, one and a half acres of parking lot building and green space drain to two uh, two storm sewers, two 12-inch storm sewers on Jefferson. 
uh, that do drain to that to that creek, and then the, this you know, approximate five acres of area drains unrestricted overland into that 12-inch uh, sewer that runs east-west under Holbolt, and then also drains to um, that uh, creek that's east east of the subject property. Um, in after in the after condition. Um, all of the site runoff from the property will be directed to t these two detention ponds. And then those two detention ponds, um, what they do is they restrict the water from leaving the property. Um, again, all this area from the site will drain to uh, this, this southerly pond that'll have a 1.85 inch hole and a 1.5 inch hole that will restrict that water from draining, from draining east. And then this large pond uh, we'll have a 2.3 inch restrictor and a 3.5 inch restrictor. So very small holes in a plate that hold that water back um, and prohibit it from draining out, rushing out uh, into the existing storm, storm sewer infrastructure. Um, and just to reiterate, the uh, total peak flow that leaves the property in the existing condition is approximately 10 CFS, 10 cubic feet per second. In the after condition, it will be less than one CFS. It will be approximately 0 0.70 uh, CFS. And that's essentially to meet the Will County Stormwater Ordinance, which uh, limits the amount of stormwater runoff from a two-year storm and a 100-year storm. So in short, there's significant reductions in peak flows. Again, uh, Louie Abuna with KLOA. Just a couple issues to clarify. There was a comment about uh, doing the counts in June and uh, the, uh, uh, the impact of the college. Uh, when the counts were done, there were double summer sessions going on at the college. Uh, so while it may not be at capacity, there were uh, school summer sessions going on. Uh, more importantly, we looked at um, uh, data, data published by IDOT. Um, and their travel statistics study, and it shows that for roads like Jefferson in the month of June, uh, carries its highest daily traffic. Uh, in addition to that, we increased the traffic that we counted by 9% to account for any variations in traffic due to conditions like summer or, or, or so forth. So we tried to account for all of that in our study to make sure that we represent uh, uh, you know, conservative conditions. Uh, from, from the standpoint of, of trucks and the concern about attracting truck traffic uh, from uh, greater distances, I think you heard uh, very clearly that this is not going to be a truck stop. This is a convenience stop for both for passenger and truck traffic. Uh, we've done many speedway uh, stations uh, all over the area, and um, uh, this is very typical of their use, typical of their location. Um, they want to be at a busy intersection because that's where the traffic is. Uh, people don't drive greater distances, whether a passenger vehicle or, or a truck driver, to go to a, a gas station because it's a convenience <laughs> stop. And they happen to be on the road, they turn in, fill up, get their whatever they need, and they exit and, and continue in the same direction. This has been verified by studies over the years, studies we've done, but also studies done nationally by the Institute of Transportation Engineers that shows 70% uh, of the trips during the peak hour are passed by, are already on the roadway system. And uh, as far as mitigating our impact, I think we're, we are doing our fair share as, uh, in, in terms of doing the turning lanes on in Jefferson, but we're also improving the intersection. We are widening Hobart Road uh, from the north right now. Like I said earlier, it has a very short uh, turn lanes. Uh, we are extending it to 150 feet to accommodate any truck traffic and increase in passenger vehicles uh, to mitigate our impact. So uh, we are doing our fair share to mitigate. So thank you. Thank you. With that, just two brief things uh, in terms of crime rate that was mentioned. I'd like to go to this one in Lombard. You can see, this is DuPage County, you can see the closeness of the intersection here. This has no crime reporting at this site here. So this is a new facility of the exact same type that we're proposing to build here, a new modern facility. In terms of the FAA, 
we submitted actual drawings. We submitted our site plans. We submitted our elevations. We submitted heights of the ID sign, the canopies, front and back, and the building. So they knew exactly what we were proposing to build. We also did contact the Bureau of Aviation at IDOT, and they said they had no jurisdiction in this and that they did not want to receive drawings from us. So we've covered our bases on, on that. What we're trying to say is that we feel that this proposal would be a good addition to the neighborhood. It is a siphoning use. It is improving the traffic in terms of the modifications that we're doing to the intersection with the left-hand turn lane into our site also applies to any left-hand turns at the intersection. We're also making Hobolt wider so traffic can go easily out of that area. So we are, in a sense, in helping to improve the existing condition. We are a good neighbor. We pro, um, have a very strong commitment to the communities, and we hope that you'll view on us favor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments from the commissioners? No. No? So there will be uh, a motion for Z-2-19, V-4-19, P-4-19, either for or against uh, this project. Does anybody want to make a motion? Motion. What's your motion? No. Motion to deny. To deny. To deny. To deny? To second. Deny. Can we have a roll call, second. please? Mr. Kella? Aye. Mr. Mystic? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mr. Rusinellis? Aye. Mr. Caparelli? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Mr. Crompton? Aye. Ms. Spidey? Aye. Mr. Dillon? Uh, you know, you guys have a wonderful company. You do. Great presentation. But um, I vote. Uh, yeah, I uh, to deny. Um, Thank you. Thank you. You guys got a great company, though. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just not a good area for us. Yeah, we uh, do we have any? Uh, we have uh, anything else then? Yes. Uh, next item on the agenda would be old business, no public hearing. There are no items listed there. Under new business, no public hearing, we have no items. There are no items for study session. Staff has no old or new business, not for final action or recommendation, unless there is something from the uh, commission. No, a motion for adjournment. Second. I got one. No, I can't make it. Need the motion. Right. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> this is long enough. <laughs>